Morning, everyone. Um, this is Britt Simon. So I don't have an awful lot of time this morning, but I did want to uh, just uh, jump on a um, jump on a call and um, uh, do a quick video just to say uh, you know a couple of things. Um, so firstly, uh, and I'll answer a couple of questions as we go through here, just just for a few minutes. Um, first thing is in the Gomez appeal. Uh, Gomez is uh, Gomez versus Trump is the lawsuit that protects all of DV 2020 winners. Um, it was the class action. It was the the case that won the class action. Uh, Warning all. Um, it was the case that won the class action uh, protection for all DV 2020 winners. There is an appeal this morning from the Gomez lawyers, and their their appeal is. Um, they're trying to rechallenge uh, aspects of the original um, judgment. Um, so, if you want to listen in on that, um, you can listen in. It's going to be in about an hour from now, just under an hour from now. Um, and I'm going to put the link in the um, in the chat window here. Uh, hmm, don't know what what that. What, what went wrong there? But anyway, there is a link in there, so that in about an hour's time, um, you can uh, you can listen in on that. Okay, so um, quick qu couple of questions here. So Ibros is saying, uh, let's see, talk about public charge. Uh, Ibros, where are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one. Okay, talk about public charge. Will it be removed? I think this is sort of often misunderstood. Um, public charge concerns or the, the ability or the requirement for an immigrant case to satisfy the CO with regard to public charge has always existed. Um, it's existed for 100 years, right? Trump didn't just make this up. Trump just added a little bit of extra, uh, a little bit of extra hassle. The extra hassle that he introduced uh, was challenged successfully in court, and it was removed for some time. And then just recently, they've reintroduced some aspects of it. What it probably means is that by the time DV 2021 cases go for interviews, they will probably probably be asked about healthcare um, and may be expected to fill out a DS-5540. That, that form actually has been removed, I believe, from the USCIS uh, CIS website. But, they may, but an applicant may be challenged to uh, to explain what they'll do about healthcare. I've previously made a video about how that can be handled. Um, and, uh, and I actually don't see it as a huge barrier. Um, you have to commit to getting healthcare within the first 30 days of arriving in the States. And you have to plan and show how you're going to do that, right? Um, but there are ways to show that. And so it doesn't need to be a big hassle. So that's an aspect that is going to come back for consular processing cases. Um, and probably by the time we see DV lottery cases, that'll be there. But the other aspects of, of uh, public charge, for instance, the need to show an I-134, have not changed, not been introduced by Trump, are still there. Uh, you still need to, in a lot of cases, show that you have either savings that can support yourself, and it has to be substantial savings, and in cash, you know, in, in money at the bank, etc., not not assets like I own a house or whatever. Um, or preferably provide an I-134 from someone you know in the USA that's prepared to support you. That I-134 is not financially and, uh, binding on the person that fills that form out for you, um, unlike an I-864, which is used in other immigrant cases. So the I-134 is simply like a, uh, a promise, um, and not even a promise that, you can, that either of you can be held to. So, um, so it's worth looking into that, and I have, uh, I have a. Uh, let me just check that. I have a description about public charge and about um, about the I one thirty four on my website, which I'll I'll put a link into uh, the chat for that. Okay, so that's that's public charge, bro. So I hope that helps. Um, Okay, so Akum, you came on January 1st and you got your social security card. Welcome to the States. I'm glad you arrived safely. 
Um, a lot of people didn't uh, get through. You did, obviously, um, and you've already got your social security card only two weeks later, so that's awesome. Um, but do keep in touch with us in the future if you have any ne negative impacts. You know, do, do let me know. But, uh, but otherwise, congratulations and uh, good luck to you in your American journey. I'm, I'm proud of you. Um, is it important to participate with a lawsuit on 35K 2021 Africa? Right, so, and I got another couple of questions about this uh, on my blog um, about the Nicolette Glazer lawsuit. And someone said, why am I not recommending the Nicolette Glazer lawsuit? And I, I touched on this briefly yesterday before I was cut short on the call. Um, right now, we're about to see what Biden is going to do, right? He's going to be the president in less than a week's time. Um, he may change things. I think lawsuits currently, um, if you can afford to do them, great. You can always do a lawsuit, you know, wonderful. Good luck to you. Um, but other than that, if you, if you are, if you're having to be sort of cautious or careful with money because, you know, um, 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks, if that means a lot to you, then I certainly don't recommend that you go for additional lawsuits right now. There will be other opportunities. There will be other lawsuits that are, uh, around you know for that now Curtis Morrison has just filed a lawsuit uh, Curtis Morrison and Raphael Arena I think uh, they've got about a thousand people that are uh, participating on that lawsuit um, and so you know some people will file lawsuits for sure and Nicolette Glazer is going to file a lawsuit but with Nicolette Glazer in particular I have no idea of her tra track record I don't know what she's done with regard to immigration uh, before she's not been involved in any of the cases uh, for DV lottery. So although I think she's been a very careful observer, uh, observer of what's gone on with other cases, I don't think she's been a participant in any of them. Um, and so um, so I, I just cautioned people to say, look, you know, look at the track record, look at the uh, track record of the lawyer, look at the, their, you know, perhaps if, if you can't get that, their strategy, does their strategy sound very good? But other than that, don't just go like a headless chicken, I've described it before. Don't run around like a headless chicken, just determined to get on a lawsuit because you've heard it's a good idea. Don't do that. It's you know, it, there's no need at the moment. A week in a week's time, we have a new president. So um, you know, think about that then. Okay. Um, you know, let's see what Biden does. Um, okay, a couple of so this is a tale of two cities. We heard from Akum just a moment ago, who um, uh, who um, you know, attempted an entry on, on the first and was turned away. And uh, here's another case here, a different case. Let's read this one. Uh, my husband and I attempted an entry on the first and managed to get to SF, but were withdrawn due to the extension. Withdrawn meaning, I presume, uh, turned back. We were encouraged by the immigration officers to apply for an NIE under the grounds that he's a technical worker holding a senior position uh, called in the financial hardship. Yep, good idea. Uh, Cisco. Uh, due to the delay in entry country, short version. What's the likelihood of receiving an NIE? We're applying in Sweden, our home country. Um, you're a DV lottery case, I presume, Julie. Um, uh, and I think unlikely is the answer. So generally speaking, NIEs, which for other people that don't know, is a national interest exception, um, generally are um, requested and either approved or denied at the interview by the the consular officer that, that interviews you for your case. They're normally discussed in relation to, let's say, a family-based uh, a family-based application for immigration benefits or even non-immigrant, um, where you can show that you're being kept away from your family in America, for example, and therefore um, it's affecting citizens or residents of the United States to not be able to bring you to the States, right? So that would be one legitimate example where an NIE would have a good chance of, uh, of success. Similarly, for a work-based um, uh, case, where, for example, you're a doctor or something like that, and, uh, or, even, or even, as you're saying, a technical worker, worker you know, some, some people ha um, you know, have uh, you know, important jobs they need to get to and, and their company wants to sort of speak up on their behalf. In that case, um, a company or, or a hospital or whoever is the future employer in America can, uh, can point out how they are being harmed by this immigrant not being allowed to enter. 
for DV lottery, the situation is different. You you you're not going for family based reasons. You're not going. You may have family connections, but it, it's not the reason for your for your visa. And same thing, you may be going for job reasons, but it's not the reason for your visa, right? So um, it's not impossible to get it, but it's a little bit harder. It's not it's not got quite the same sort of perspective, in my opinion. Now, um, lawyers are out there that will help you with that if you want to do that. But Julie, what I would say to you is just wait for a few days. I presume you're back in Sweden. Um, just wait for a few days and uh, see what uh, Biden does. If he lifts the um, if he lifts the the ban, then you'll be able to enter no problem. There has been no negative impact, as far as I'm concerned or or aware, of anybody that's attempted an entry into the USA, either for those people that entered that successfully entered or for those that were turned away. There's no negative impact for those that are turned away. You know, you're not losing your, your, um, your, your um, visa. Um, for those that entered, there is a little bit like Akum earlier, there is a little bit of a risk or concern about um, the fact that that person entered while inadmissible. But I'm, and the, and the lawyers are more concerned about that and more cautious about that than, than I um, I think I'm probably being a bit more realistic. I don't think, I don't think the government's going to do anything about that. I don't think anybody's going to suffer any harm for that. But if they do, they'll need to engage uh, legal help for that, right? So that's more for Akum than it is for Judy, right? Okay. Um, uh, Hesham updates for 2021. The the only update is we're waiting, right? We're just waiting for uh, to see when interviews start. The whole thing, the whole year is going to be based on when do interviews start, right? If they if they start issuing 2NLs in January, which they might, I don't think they will, but they might, um, then there's, you know, then, then that would be for March interviews. And we'd have March, April, May, June, July, August, and September as, um, as interview months. And we can get quite a lot of, of people through in that time. But if we continue to lose time, every month that goes by that we don't have interviews is detrimental, is a problem. And so um, it really is very much keyed about 2021 interviews starting. That's the important point. And we're in a holding pattern about that. So I had someone the other day that was concerned that I don't talk about 2021 enough. It's partly because there isn't anything going on. There are some lawsuits happening. Biden might change some things. The embassies are, are mostly closed, although there is now a list of embassies which are open, which I can put in here. Um, uh, there is a list of embassies which are, well, this is an interesting one. So um, this list of embassies I just pasted in the chat there comes from some legal, um, some legal work that Curtis Morrison and Raphael Arena did, which prompted a response uh, where the government said, these embassies are open. But the way they worded it, I think, I think possibly Curtis might, might have missed the nuance here. They say these embassies are open. These are, and they say just before that these embassies that are managed by MVC are open, or case for cases that are managed by MVC, visa types that are managed by MVC. MVC does not manage DV lottery cases, and so the inference there may be, and perhaps I'm reading too much into that small sentence but the inference there may be that uh that these embassies may be fully open for other types of visas but not for those types of visas managed by kcc which is dv lottery and i think one or two other other classes so um so if you you know if you do have um if that list of embassies i just gave is interesting to you you may want to contact your embassy and ask are they doing dv lottery cases if they are then I think we need to maybe begin to talk to KCC to say, look, my embassy is open. I'm current. You've told me I'm ready for scheduling. I want my bloody interview, right? We might have to move into that mode. But we're a couple of weeks away from that position, perhaps, because as I say, I, I think that's going to be kind of, that's going to be difficult to argue, but also it's important to, do, to make arguments at the right time. And the right time is just after Biden has taken power. And um, we're a little clearer on what he's going to do in his early days of, of being in power. Um, you're in Virginia, Arlington, Echo. Wow, uh, cold, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, beautiful place. Beautiful place in the summer. I just wouldn't go there in the cold. Um, 
Okay, for anybody else, like Mo, for example, that's asking, should we enter? Uh, don't try an entry at the moment. It would be foolish to try an entry at this time. Wait until the 20th. I got a very sad message from someone um, who has been avoiding the Schengen area ban by hanging out in Mexico. They've given up their work. They're waiting to enter. They thought they could enter on the 1st, and they couldn't. Um, and now they have to wait until at least the 20th, and they're probably going to you know, remain where they are, which is a difficult position. I, I realize they're in a difficult position. Um, but um, you know, but hopefully those people and others will be laughing about this you know, start to their American journey in years to come. Uh, DV2019, if you're talking about DV2019, uh, that has definitely ended. Okay. Do the, do the five stay home? Is that about COVID? I'll be coming on to that at the end of this video, and I appreciate your sentiment there, Jahed. Uh, do stay home indeed. Um, AF161800, what, what do you think about 2021? I just explained that, Hesham. Um, for the Gomez appeal, I just talked about that. Um, and so, um, you know, you can listen in and see about the Gomez appeal that's happening today. And there are some other important dates, by the way. The 22nd, there's some more action. Um, generally speaking, though, don't don't go crazy on watching all these things. It's not that interesting. It's not like somebody's going to just, you know, go into a, uh, a courtroom today and say everything's good. It doesn't work like that. The legal process is slow and complex. And so, I, you know, I, I think sometimes you're better off just not um, not watching. Just wait for the outcome. But uh, but there you go. Um, this is an interesting question that's commonly asked. Can I apply for the next lottery while the DB2022 or whatever is processing? Yes, anybody can apply. <coughs> you can apply for the lottery even if you're a winner of 2022. Um, but you must not be applying for DB2023 right now. That will only open in October of this year. So if you're applying right now with any site, that site is not a legitimate site. Or if a person is offering to enter you in the 2023 DB lottery, that's not a legitimate um, person, right? Don't pay anyone. Don't, you know, don't let idiots like that um, rip you off. Um, let me scan through here. Um, your case, so Mohsen, you're saying, why is your case at MVC? And you still didn't get the first letter. MVC, where, where you see in SIAC, the at MVC, it's simply a starting status. It doesn't mean anything. You can ignore everything it says on there. It's just like being ready to start the, the race. That's all it means. Um, uh, about DV2020, do I think that people who got the visa in September have a chance? Yes, I do. I, I, I think one way or the other, we'll sort that out, whether it's by Biden using some wisdom or whether it's by the lawyers using some uh, legal effort. I think they'll get sorted out one way or the other. Um, What's going to happen? Here we go. What's going to happen, says Javier, with DB2020? Um, yeah, same question, really. So I, I think something will happen. But there is also there is some work being done to try and get extensions but I, but um, or reissuances. And I saw Rafael Lorena yesterday talked, uh, and I agree with him, that he said um, reissuances are more likely than extensions. So the government just suddenly sort of saying, okay, all those all those um, visas that were issued with six months validity based on uh, the medical, they're now you know they're now going to have another three months. I think that's unlikely, although I'd hope for it. But reissuances, which is where you would then go pay your fees again, have a new medical, that would be I think likely. But to me, the best thing, the very best thing would be because it would be the cheapest thing. Um, would it be for Biden to remove the, the ban, PP10014, and, um, and then people could enter. That would be the best idea. And obviously the Schengen bans and other country bans, they will still be in place, but you can get around those. So if Biden will at least remove PP10014, that would be good. But COVID is getting worse, and I'm going to talk about that at the end. COVID is getting worse, and, um, you know, so uh, as I was beginning to talk about, I think, yesterday, um, you know, you, this could be an affected year by COVID as well. All right. What about the Gomez and Acker lawsuit? Did they talk about 2020? That's what, that's, that's what, 
that that's what that lawsuit is about gomez and acker um and that's what that extension conversation i just had with you is about right uh but gomez and acker is only about dv 2020 right we need some good news about dv 2021 of course you do um i understand but uh, you know uh, you have to be patient How about 2021, says Tabor. Could a high number case number like 77K be lucky in Cameroon? Okay. Firstly, it's got nothing to do with your country. It's not that you're in Cameroon or any other country. It doesn't matter. It's, you're still 77K within the region. And it is, um, it's a high number in the region and therefore risky. Um, uh, but it doesn't, it's not made easier because Cameroon may be a small number. That's, that's not going to help at all, right? Um, so uh, the question is, how will they operate? And, and there are more than enough people prior to 77K to fill the visas if, if we were in a normal year. But of course, this is not a normal year. Some people won't be able to um, process their cases due to embassy closures, due to change of situation or whatever. So, you know, who knows what will happen? I'm not predicting it. So, uh, and I don't, I don't advise anybody else to try and predict it. If you think you can, then it's simply you don't understand how complex this, this this is this year. You're not taking into account the other factors. And the other factors are much more powerful than the math. Um, so there you go. Uh, Parsi, yes, I do understand. It's a weird situation, and, and, and there is this conversation with Meta going on by the Gomez and Aka uh, lawyers to, um, to try and correct that weird situation. But it was known. When Meta, when Meta um, uh, said, so what Meta essentially said back in September was, yes, the president has the right to stop entry into the USA. He has that absolute right, and Meta didn't believe that was, um, it wasn't something he wanted to accept a challenge on, right? The Gomez lawyers are going for that again now. But he did not want to accept um, that the, the, the president didn't have that right. He did say, however, that, uh, just because people can't enter doesn't mean that you shouldn't be issuing them visas. And so he immediately created knowingly that weird situation. It's not a surprise. You, you should not be surprised by this, Parser, and no one else should be. Um, that was what we argued for, right? With the hope that the bans would be removed, with the hope that, um, you know, Biden would win, etc. We were gambling, and um, and I'm hopeful that you understood that. Um you know, uh, that's the situation we've got ourselves into deliberately, as it were. It's tough. Um, it's hard. I understand that. But that is the situation we knew we were going to get into. And so now the lawyers are going through their process. So trust the process a little bit. Hope for Biden. Trust the lawyers um, and be patient. That's what I would say. Um, Sandra is asking, when will the two and L start? I don't know. Um, is the uh, is the answer there? Lisbeth says Lisbeth Rosalista Rodriguez. What a great uh, Latino name! That's awesome. Uh, my family is from Spain, so um, Brit, I heard the appeal, and for me, it makes sense. Uh, the judge argument is it a way to stop DV twenty twenty two process and make stand? No, it doesn't really. I, so I I've seen this before. You know. Um, let's move all the cases to DV 2022, let's do this, let's do that. The law doesn't work like that. Um, you know, it's not like, it's just not like that, right? Uh, the, the, the lottery process is, is described and run according to laws that describe it very carefully. And so you can't just make random decisions like saying, oh, okay, there'll be no 2022 lottery. Instead of that, everyone that didn't get a visa in 2020 or 2021 will get will be processed in 2022. It doesn't work like that. I, I'd love to think it would, but it just doesn't. So, um, no. Wafa, uh, some say I should submit my documents without KCC emailing me to ask, what should I do, Britza? You've asked me that before, Wafa. Stop listening to other people and idiots. Um, start listening to me. <laughs> what I've said to you before, I believe, is that for the time being, I don't think it's wise to try and send your documents without being asked for them. The reason is that I believe KCC will lose them, okay? And they did that for people in DV 2020 and in fact, even in DV 2019. They did that, 
right? They asked everybody to send their documents at some point. They created a disaster, and the whole thing became a mess up. And so we now have a thing called Category 5 DB2020 winners who sent their documents, possibly badly in some cases, causing their own problem, but, but very likely correctly in a lot of cases, and those documents were lost or never processed. So, um, so I don't want you to do anything at the moment that will endanger your ability to know whether your, your documents are processed or not. I would prefer you get an email. And if you've got a high case number particularly, there's no need for you to panic like you are. So just wait, be patient, wait to be asked. Now, in a month or two, I'll begin to change my answer. Okay, I will start to suggest that people proactively send them in a month or two, um, but not now. Okay, wait until you know processing is actually working a little bit better and just just wait. Okay, Wefa, we don't need to do this one again, right? We've talked about this enough, I think. Um, yeah, I'll have to wait and sort of you know hear what they've said, okay, um, and uh, you know see what they're they're saying. But no no real readout on that yet. I'll also wait to see what the lawyers say. Um, okay. Um, great to meet you. Where are you? Right. So there's two questions here from Great Tatsumaki. Um, you won the green card in 2021. You sent your documents, but I've not received a response. Is it normal? Yes. What's your case number? Um, if it's a high case number, it's perfectly normal that they haven't sent it. Um, so you have to just be patient. Okay. Um, your second question is, uh, you changed your workplace. Should you resend the DS260? No, I would not do that. I would, for the sake of a minor change, like you changed your job, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't update my um, DS260 for that. Um, Deepak says, uh, your passport is expired and you renewed it. DV 2020, visa expired in May. Could not renew it because the embassy, because the US embassy is closed. Okay. You'll have to wait um, until the, until DV 2020 reissuances um, are, uh, are being allowed. And we're working on that at the moment. So just wait. Uh, pay careful attention to my channel, and I'll if I hear some good news on that, I'll let you, I'll let you and everybody else know. Um, yes, thanks for bringing this up, Sufu. Um, so I started a petition, which I'm going to put in in here. Um, I started a petition uh, for people to try and fight for their um, uh, for their cases in DV 2020 and DV 2021. Now, I've got a green card. I don't need a petition. Um, but I started the petition on your behalf, on all of your behalf, right? And I'm sure everybody listening here now has signed the, uh, the petition. But we only have 17,000 uh, signatures. And we need to get to 100,000. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. Right? I mean, it means something, but it, doesn't, it won't get uh, an answer from the White House. So um, everybody that's on the call now and all of the 40,000 people that follow my channel and the people that watch this video subsequently, please make sure you sign the petition and get 10 of your friends to sign the petition. If everybody does that, we'd be done with this and we'd have a petition signed by the additional 80,000 people that, that we need. Um, if you don't do that, then the petition's not going to work for you. And I think it's actually quite a useful thing in this particular case. I don't like petitions normally. I've told people why I don't like petitions normally. I certainly didn't support any of them that were started during Trump's um, era. Um, but now we're going to have a different person in the White House. The petition might be useful. So please go ahead and, and make sure you sign that and get other people. Anybody can sign it. It doesn't have to be a DV lottery person. So publicize that and get it done. OK? Um, this is an odd question. According to you, what's the worst case scenario, best case scenario? Um, well, I, I mean, <laughs> best case scenario is, you know, as I said earlier, Biden removes the ban, you enter before March 23rd. Worst case scenario, something else happens. I don't know what that will be. We'll have to see. Um, but I, why would I want to discuss the worst case scenario? That's a weird question. Really. Um, is it mandatory to join the lawsuit? No, it's not mandatory. What if the person can't afford the fees? Then don't join a lawsuit. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to get over. Uh, don't join a lawsuit. It's, you know, it's not necessary. 
um, you know, if you certainly if you can't afford it, don't go into debt to join a lawsuit. It's, you know, the lawyers, um, th there's lawyers fighting for you anyway. There are other DB 2021 lawsuits that are fighting for you anyway. I keep trying to tell people this. The Annunciato case is out there. That's a class action. They're asking for class action. Just don't, you know, don't spend your money, particularly if you can't afford to spend it. Okay. Do you think Kennedy plaintiffs have a high chance to get the visas since Kennedy was consolidated? Maybe. We don't know whether that's going to get them priority or not. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the uh, Gomez case. Uh, I'm worried that Biden will be too busy with the mess that Trump left behind and he'll be late in removing that PP. Yep, absolutely, that could happen. He's got a lot to do. And as I explained yesterday, you know, DV lottery or other immigrant cases being blocked by at the moment is not the highest thing on his on his um, list of things to do, but he's working hard and we just have to wait and see. There's no point in your worrying about something you can't do anything about, right? So just wait and see. Teori, uh, if, I, if I still can't move to the USA, I have to get him a green card. Do I have to fingerprint my re-entry permit application in the state of the US? Yes. So if you want to apply for a an I-131, which is a re-entry permit, you have to do that while in America. Um, and it, and then you have to stay in America until you've at least done the bi biometrics, which generally takes from four to six weeks after you submit the I-131. Um, and you can then leave the USA and you can have the I-131 sent to your local embassy, but um, but it takes several weeks to, to start that process, okay? I had a question from someone this morning that has that realizes now they're not going to be able to re-enter the USA um, uh, before their one year absence is up. So they entered in, let's say, March of early March of 2020, and because of COVID, they're not able to re-enter, and so they'll have been out of the country as a green card holder for over one year, and that means that they will pretty much automatically forfeit their. Um, their right of permanent resident status, arguably. I mean, I don't think that's the right terminology, actually. But in their case, and in all such cases, you can apply to your local embassy for an SB1 returning resident visa. And, um, and the whole point of the SB1 is for people in that sort of position to be able to re-enter the USA after the 12 months, even though they didn't apply for an I-131 in the first place. And, and for circumstances beyond your control, like COVID, um, it, it's likely to be approved. So I told someone who's applying from Australia exactly what they should do um, to get an SB1 visa, rather than trying to travel now between now and March, when you know it's difficult to travel from Australia, and um, and also it's, it's kind of dangerous to travel at the moment anyway. Um, Um, so Parsa has insider information that probably will probably rescind. Yep, I, I'm not sure if that's solid, 100% true, but but it's my suspicion too. Um, and I I'm not claiming to have insider information, but I just think it's the right thing that uh, that he should do. Um, okay, a couple more questions. Um, 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 um. No one was interviewed over 20K in AS region from C8 data. Am I right, sir? No, you're not right. Um, the, the data shows otherwise. You're not looking at the data very well at all. Um, is there any chance for 3,200? That's a low case number, so you've got a good chance. Um, to GCSE to finish high school and went to college. Uh, with that and finish, uh, you need to find a company undertaking bachelor. Am I still okay? Yeah, I think so. Um, the the it depends. I don't know your country, so Ben, it depends on the requirements of your country. Uh, in you know, but it, the fact that you're able to enter college um, and then go to um, start a ba bachelor tells me that you've probably completed the education required. Um, in order to to be accepted onto DV lottery, um, so yeah, I think you're probably okay. Okay, um, 
So I'm going to I'm going to wrap up, but before I go, I just wanted to apologise for um, and take a moment to talk about yesterday. Um, at the end of my call yesterday, my wife interrupted me um, and uh, and told me that my mum, who had um, who had contracted COVID in December, um, was struggling. Um, and my mum lives in the UK, and so. Um, it became very quickly clear that um, that this was going to be my last opportunity to send a message to my mom and and um, and she was going to pass away. And she did um, within a few minutes of me um, you know, stopping the uh, the um, the video yesterday. Uh, so I lost my mom to covid yesterday. and I just wanted to say, um, you know I, i'm I'm old. my my mom was old, you know, it's not you know, people die. That's what happens. But COVID is a killer. And um, in case your country is not taking COVID seriously, please do take it seriously. Uh, in my country of the UK, 85,000 people have died, my mother now being one of those. Um, in this country, by the time Biden takes office, 400,000 people will have died from COVID. Um, it's not a hoax. It's not a joke. Uh, is very serious, and it, it is impacting all of our lives. And so it's very unfair, um, and it's for DV Lottery people, it's um, uh, it's affected DV 2020 people and DV 2021, and it's a horrible impact. But number one, take COVID seriously. Number two, take time to give your loved ones a hug. And, um, and you know, number three, try and keep things in balance, in perspective, um, you know, people are dying, and although you're worried about your visas, etc., people are are literally losing their lives. There's a lot of empty, empty seats at a lot of empty, you know, at a lot of dining tables uh, throughout the world. So, you know, take precautions, wear masks, wash your hands, uh, do what the government say. Don't be that a hole that that says it's all a hoax, um, uh, because it most certainly isn't. And I've lost a good friend to it, and now my mother. Um, so, um, you know, it's definitely, um, you know, it's definitely out there. So anyway, I just wanted to say that, um, as I say, uh, firstly, apologies for cutting the call short yesterday, but, uh, but now you know why, and I didn't know what was happening. My wife just came in my office and, um, and wanted to, you know, to interrupt me because she, she realized that I had probably a few minutes left, um, um, which was exactly what happened less than 30 minutes. Um, but thankfully, the one good thing about, you know, COVID and cancer and those sort of things is that you have time to say, in some cases, you typically have time to say something and you should say something and you should tell someone you love them because you don't know whatever your religious beliefs are, you don't know whether you're going to see them again. Um, and so, you know, anyway, all right. Um, no more sadness about that. Um, you know, everyone, good luck with your own journeys. Take care of your family. And, uh, and I'll see you in a couple of days' time. All right? Okay. Bye-bye now.